Next stop, Italy. Seth Doan has a story that tastes as good as it looks. It can be hard to know where to look along Italy's stunning Amalfi Coast, but this picture-perfect setting has a sort of natural green frame. There are terraces carved into the mountainside, where for centuries, lemons have been grown. It's a lemon farm with a view. <laughs> they grew amazing. <laughs> <laughs> They're happier here. Yeah, I think so. If it were possible to envy produce, well, maybe it is. These lemons sit perched over a mall feet, unbridled by budgets or travel bans. They should be good if they're grown <laughs> yeah, they here. They have to be they good. They have to be good. <laughs> they have they're to be spoiled. Good. Yeah. Salvatore Aceto is a sixth generation lemon farmer. The roots here run even deeper. Before Amalfi became a ritzy tourist destination, it was the first maritime republic of what is now Italy. Trade was vital, and about a thousand or so years ago, lemons were imported. They thrived on this mountainous terrain and became a key ingredient in the culinary landscape, used in dishes, even painted onto them. Send the profumo. Hmm? Wow, nice. Together with his dad Luigi and son Gianmarco, he farms these steep terraces. Looking out into the valley here, you see the lemon terraces yeah. throughout this part yeah. of Amalfi. This is the, the heart of Amalfi, no? The Aceto's lemon grove totals about 2,700 trees and about 1,300 steps. It's tough on the knees, but good for the heart. Il limone la mia vita. Lemons are your life. And at 87 years old, Luigi is still working. You don't have blood in your veins? You have lemon juice in your veins. Your grandfather told me he had lemon juice in his, in his veins. Yeah, Has it. that happened to you yet? Or? I still have to discover. I have to do some, uh, some tests. Gianmarco is studying agronomy and is the seventh generation here. He'll be contending with a changing climate and another challenge. Without tourism, this is not sustainable. It's impossible to compete with the other countries that produce lemons because they have uh, less cost. Tourists, at least pre-COVID, when they had visitors here, made up more than 50% of the Aceto's business. They'd come for tours or tastings. One of the things that surprised me when I first saw these Amalfi lemons was that yeah. you eat them almost like an apple. Yeah, yeah, you can eat everything because it's organic. Mm. Salvatore's wife, Giovanna, runs the cooking classes, but with no tourists, she made a lemon pasta, shalatielli, just for us. A little garlic, parsley, and lemon. We joined the three generations for lunch. When you were away at school, did you miss all of this? The meal or being with the family? <laughs> the family, of course. The pasta? I didn't miss the shalatielli with lemons. We ate it uh, almost every day, so I developed a repulsion uh, towards it. Others at the table, including this reporter, did not agree. It's delicious. The pasta was followed by a lemon chicken, scamorza cheese cooked in a lemon leaf, and then a lemon tort, all served, of course, on a lemon tablecloth and polished off with some limoncello. Their own production. We try to use only the yellow part because the white is a little bit sour. Cousin Luigi Aceto talked us through the process. They use lemon rind, pure alcohol, and sugar, then let it rest for several days. Lemon, limoncello, then maybe ceramic from Vietri. These are the most requested products here in the Amalfi Coast. In the town of Vietri, those ceramics have a familiar theme. It's a way to celebrate and immortalize this perishable product. In the sensory overload that is the Amalfi Coast, at least one family here would argue that taste is the sense that wins. It's amazing. It's sweet. May I Isn't try? It? Yeah. It's really good. 